Welcome back, folks, for our second season of the Stampede. We're starting off here this year again, right where we left off last year with our main man, Coach Bill. We're heading into football season again. It's an exciting week. All the kids are back in. The teachers are back. Everybody's pumped. Tonight, Coach, you're, you're starting off. You're going down for a scrimmage, right? Yes, go down to Cave Spring. Cave Spring. What are you expecting out of these guys this week? Uh, we're just hoping to uh, see an aggressive, fast football team from us. We really don't know a lot about them, but it's uh, traditionally been our first scrimmage, and it's always been a good uh, barometer to just to see how the season's going to play out. Sure. So we're excited. Awesome. I, you know, I've noticed a lot from the kids, too, you know, social media and different things, and it's, it's new year, new attitude. Oh, and, yeah. And what, what's yeah, behind yeah. that? Yeah, I, I mean, love seeing it. It's been a lot of good, positive energy. It started in the... Um, weight room this summer we probably had our best summer of lifting not only in terms of just work but also in terms of chemistry and like you said just that desire they, they sort of been lifting with a chip on their shoulders yeah. feeling like they got something to prove so it's awesome you know, just we'll, seeing their social media posts and different things and talking to the kids here this week it, it's gotten me excited already oh know? yeah and it's I gotten hope, me excited as well i hope it carries over to the field for them this yeah. year and uh so you guys I wanted some of the folks to know kind of what you do through the summer with the team. You guys, you I mean, it's not day one you come into school and you're automatically a football player. No. You started months ago. Well, you start, you? yeah, the first week we get out of school, which is the early June. We lift weights on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. And we also do a lot of uh, running, conditioning. And I have like a Thursday walk through practices. So we've been getting after it yeah. for three months almost. And some hot days right. in yeah, the summer, yeah, too, Yeah, right? it has been. <laughs> but um, amazing effort out of the kids, really. I mean, just willing to pay the price then so they can have success in the fall. Right. Any players really stood out to you through the summer that you're looking forward to seeing? Oh, uh, I mean, I hate to leave anybody out, but, I mean, all of our juniors and seniors have shown great leadership from, uh, you know, the top to the bottom, our linemen, skilled folks, they're all there setting examples for like our ninth and 10th graders and even seventh and eighth graders. You know, we've had middle school kids up lifting throughout the summer. That's so that's been a great thing for us. Absolutely, get to see a little bit of the future there. Oh yeah, it's awesome. some good role models. So if you narrow down kind of into your starters, I don't want to be giving anything away for tonight, but to uh, you know, down we're your... getting there. And obviously uh, that's one of the big things of the scrimmage that sort of, We'll see how they compete against an opponent and hopefully going into next week's game with Galax. It's a benefit game, though. We'll have an uh, idea who's going to be playing a lot for us. And the more, the better. Absolutely. You know, you know, we're a little bit smaller in number, but I think we got some really good quality in our uh, players this year. Awesome. So we're, we're, we just say we're starting into another school year. So just let's step off the field for the second. Right. How many school years is this for you now uh, coming into? 44. 44. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. I'm almost as old as the school. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach, we, we really thank you for joining right. us today. We're on an early dismissal, so we're heading out early today. It's a little hot in Floyd County. Oh, yeah. So. Good best of luck to you tonight, and I hope everything goes well. And we'll catch you next week for the Stampede. We'll, we'll get with Coach Bill. We got, as you said, it was Galax next Galax week. Galax in the benefit game. The benefit game is here at Floyd. So Seven make sure all you fans are out here supporting our Buffaloes. Get loud and get wild for them. So thank you, Coach, and thank we'll see you. you next week. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, bud. All righty. Welcome back, folks. We're here with another Clubhouse segment on our show today. We have my most favorite teacher in the world, Miss Morris. She has developed a brand new program this year down here. It's a sports medicine program. She's worked really hard on it. Um, so, Miss Morris, tell us a little bit about the path and how you came to develop the program and how you, did you want us, did you think that you would get into sports medicine when you came here? I honestly did not think that sports medicine would even be an opportunity for our students here. I actually wanted sports medicine to be available for our students when I first came to Floyd County. But the opportunity to bring our students a program like that, it takes a little bit of work. Um, you actually have to have a teacher that is a National Academy of Sports Medicine certified personal trainer. So you have to take an examination for that. In order to do that, you have to study and uh, work really hard. So I went ahead and did that this past year and 
with the help of Ms. Questenberry and Mr. Hollinsworth and Mr. Cantrell, we were able to go ahead and get all the stuff in order to bring sports medicine this year. So in addition to my credentials to be a teacher, I also have to have that examination and certification as well. So where did you do those examinations at or where was the program based at? It was actually based online. Um, you can sit for the certified personal trainer examination after you complete the course or you can just get the textbook and study the textbook. You do have to be at least 18 years old to sit for the certified personal trainer examination. So for our students, they will have the opportunity to sit for that examination in sports medicine too in their senior year. So we prefer that our students start out in Introduction to Health and Medical Sciences, which is another course that I teach. That way they can get a basic understanding of basic anatomy and physiology, basic microbiology, um, infection control, just the simple medical terminology, just the basics. Then they can go into Sports Medicine One, which is a program where they get a little bit more anatomy and physiology, a little bit more in depth. We start talking about biomechanics. We start talking about medical terminology. We start talking about careers in sports medicine. So they go through that course and they also receive their certification in first aid, AED and CPR, which is awesome for these kids to be able to do that. After they complete Sports Medicine 1, they are able to take Sports Medicine 2. And in Sports Medicine 2, we focus really heavy on anatomy and physiology, kinesiology, biomechanics, and personal training, kind of like prehabilitation, preseason conditioning, and rehabilitation. Once they finish that course, if they are 18, they can sit for the CPT exam. If they are not 18, they can be a senior and with administrative permission, they can also sit for their CPT exam. So they become a certified personal trainer. They gain that entry level working knowledge of a sports medicine type career. And while they're in college for physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, doctor of sports medicine, athletic trainer, they're able to gain a working knowledge and kind of get some really ex good experience to be able to be a good applicant for a future position in one of those careers. That is awesome. So they're coming out. I mean, they're ready to go in and just continue in this path. And they've gotten a, a big head start through your classes here. Yes, we're giving them the opportunity to assist in uh, their financial needs during college, in addition to being able to really get a working knowledge of how does the human body work? You know, what do we do to improve it? What do we do to rehab it? You know, all those things that are extremely important in any career in sports medicine. There's so much that goes into it. And being able to kind of work in that field before you step off into that career is amazing because you are at an advantage to the person who has never worked in that field before. So you recently just got back from a, make sure I'm saying this right, a kinesiology conference, right? So, and that's part of what you're putting into mm -hmm. your curriculum as well. So tell us a little yes. bit about that. So kinesiology, we focus on kind of like the functional movement of the human body. And it's really important that when you take a career in sports medicine, that you focus on how does the body move? You know, you want to watch and see how is your athlete moving? Do they have possibly muscles that are underactive or overactive that need to be stretched, that need to be taken care of in a certain way? So kinesiology is a huge part of athletics and sports medicine. So you've had a, a, a great response from the kids too this year. Your classes are loaded, right? And, the kids uh, are absolutely excited about sports medicine. My classes um, for sports medicine are loaded. The kids seem to really enjoy it. We're just getting started this year. So this is gonna be our first year starting this program. So we have a few things that we're probably gonna work through. But I think that overall, the student population here at Floyd County is extremely ecstatic that we have a sports medicine program here. So kind of, you know, you've, you've kind of gave us an overview. What, what is your goals for the kids as they're coming out? I mean, what do you want them to have when they leave your class? My goal in my classroom is not only to provide them the education that they need to succeed. I also focus on mind, body, and soul in my classroom. I think that we need to give these kids not only the tools that they need education-wise, but the tools that they need emotionally to succeed in their careers. So I try to really take a holistic approach with my students, and I want them to walk out of my classroom feeling like, I can do this. No matter what life throws at me, no matter what stress I'm under in school or work or even in my family life at home, that I can do this. That's my goal.
That's awesome. So, so you put, you know, you know, I'm a big dummy. So tell me what it is that when these guys come out of your class, what jobs are they going into? You know, just kind of example what they would be doing for a career. So an entry level position that a student coming out of my class that passed their National Academy of Sports Medicine certified personal trainer examination, they could walk into a gym. Um, and you know, most colleges have a gym in what? two to five miles, you could probably find several gyms. So they can walk into that gym, they can apply for a position as a certified personal trainer, and that would be the entry level working position that they would automatically be able to go into. They could possibly work maybe in some rehab centers as well, just depending on what center they're going into. I mean, certified personal trainers, I mean, people actually make a career out of this and they don't use it as an entry level position. This is a lifelong career where they have built their clientele, they've built their reputation, they've built their knowledge base and their experience, and they are actually making a really good living being a certified personal trainer. Does it branch into, you mentioned athletes earlier, does it is this, can, can you go into an athletic trainer as well? Or I yes. don't know those positions, so you have to help so, me. So if you are a certified personal trainer, you, I mean, I'm sure that um, sports teams probably hire, you know, strength and conditioning coaches. But what this does is give them that working knowledge of the human body. So while they're in school to become an athletic trainer or a physical therapist or an occupational therapist or uh, doctor of sports medicine, any of those kind of careers that kind of focus on that, they are able to support themselves while they're in college. And then they are able to gain that working knowledge of the human body and human movement. That is awesome. So you guys, you hear it here first. This is a, a loaded class. These kids are excited. Uh, the community is excited about it. Uh, you better sign up quick if you want to get into Miss <laughs> Morris's class. So thank you so much for being here with us today and good luck to you this year. Thank you so much. We are extremely excited here at Floyd County High School for Sports Medicine. Luke Whitlock, a lot of y'all are familiar with him from last year. Luke was part of our uh, Skills USA and our engine team. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty, pretty proud of that young man. Uh, Brent is, uh, and the good folks at Duncan, are, they are donating this car to us for your use. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm very appreciative of what you're doing for us. And uh, they also have purchased a uh, scan tool and a new uh, battery tester that, that you guys are going to get any use of this year, okay? I'm still trying to figure out how to use those. So, um, but if you guys got questions, they're going to know. Uh, we got Citizens Television here, the full press, somebody, they, they're here. Uh, Ms. Huff has brought the, uh, yearbook. the yearbook. I am the yearbook. I am the yearbook, okay? So uh, let them do what they need to do and, and, and talk and stuff. But I would like for you guys to talk, ask questions. Uh, because these guys are on the, they're in the front lines every day with what, what we do and what you, if you are wanting to go into this industry, um, you know, they, they can answer the questions better than I because I'm about three years removed now, so. Okay, so, uh, whatever you guys want to do there, Andrew, whatever y'all want to do, it's, it's up to y'all, so. Okay. So, to start, Sean is, is teaching y'all the correct things. I mean, you know, when we started this, I would say during a year ago, or you know, I was you know jumping back and forth with schools and, and came down here and you know just sitting through his class with what he's teaching you and, and expectations and uh, you know what what to expect when you when you get into the dealership is correct. And uh, you know at Duncan we're committed to you know to onboarding you know the guys out here you know that that are graduating. You know that's what we want to do and we want to grow and. I want you to grow and you know it's a it's a career thing it's not just a job you know so uh, but you know he's teaching the right things and that's why we're committed to uh, to donating cars and, and helping out and equipment and and coming down here and, and doing different things you know throughout the year also so you know just pay attention to him because he's, he's doing the right things you know for sure anybody got questions I had a couple of them here worked in a shop this summer, so uh, uh, I, I do think we have a few. I got a couple of them back there that competed in skills last year that are coming back, so I know some of these guys got questions. The right things, you know, Luke started out with us, 
you know, a few months ago and was, was doing great and uh, doing different things. And, you know, we we put you on the fast path of, of growing and uh, and doing different things at the dealership, not just, you know, changing oil and, and putting tires on, you know. So, um, you know, the expectation starting, I mean, he's right. I mean, you kind of start from the the bottom but you, you know if you apply yourself and uh, train and, and and you know want to do things you know you're going to be able to do different things other than just you know changing all you know that's not working on cars so no questions from anybody <laughs> i got one yeah sure <laughs> so with, with these guys when they come out are they heading into to more training in college or are you are you bringing them straight in at that point we, we bring them straight in um you know, Ford has different programs. It's called Stars with Ford, and we get them logged in right from the get-go. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's online training. Then when they get to certain steps, you know, we send them to school. You know, and usually it's a week. You know, they go to a school and they get trained in electrical. Then it's the next step. They go to the next section, and then we send them to school. So uh, I'm not saying that college and UTI and all that, you know, bad, but... Um, you know, if you can get into a dealership right off the bat, I mean, they're, we're committed to, to training. I mean, that's what we want to do. We want people to grow and train and, 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 and grow with us. You know, we're trying to grow businesses also. So, um, UTI is great. I've got kids out of UTI and guys out of UTI. And, uh, but, you, you know, you're, you're paying for the Ford, Ford School that the dealership's providing. You know, you know. Anyway, you know. So we're we're providing it, and then uh, you know we're we're paying and sending you to school also. So it just takes a little longer with us, you know, because there's certain steps you got to go through. Right. Yeah. So it gives you an option, though. So if you don't, if you're not a classroom college guy for you know four years, you, you can go straight in and still get the same thing. Yeah, because so. what happens is if you're if you're training in electrical and, and getting ready to go to class, you know, we, we may feed you a little bit of that, you know, so you're used to it. And then when you come back from that, then you're you're you know you're growing, you get to do other things, you know, at the dealership. You know, then you take the next step and go to, you know, engines and then we're you know we're giving you engines to do and stuff like that. So it's just a growth is what it is. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Tell us what we, what we have here. Yeah, so it's a 2012 Fiesta. It's, it's a vehicle that was, obviously something was wrong with it and Ford bought it back and, and now they're donating these vehicles to, to schools and, and sponsor schools. Uh, you know, everything's fixed. Uh, it drives fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, everything everything's good on it, but you know, uh, you know, Ford's just committed to you know, to doing different things for schools. So that's kind of what we got. And we, you know, we decaled it up and put a, put a few things on there for you. So, Looks good. Yeah. <laughs> Sean, can I ask a question? Yes, <laughs> um, What kind of things are your students going to be, like, using this car or cars like this for? What kind of skills are they learning? What my current plan is, now it might change, but what my current plan is is a lot of... Uh, the, the tools that Brent has supplied us with, uh, they would definitely be doing some computer diagnosis with this, multimeter readings, those type of things is what, what my plan is with this right now. Uh, familiarize them is this this industry, the technology on, on vehicles changes so quick. Uh, so, you know, I have some old stuff in here and now we have a new piece and they're just to show them the differences uh, of, of how cars grow, so to speak, uh, is huge. Uh, and even from 2012 to today, it's, mm -hmm. it's even even more. So we probably have the fastest uh, technology growth of any other industry probably in the, in the world, you know, currently right now. So how many tires have you changed the, the first couple months of work? Couldn't count them fingers. <laughs> So it would be fair to say that if you could master the tire uh, machine, that you, you're probably going to do pretty well to that'll, enter into. That'll into, help you greatly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You hear that, guys? <laughs> That's one of our units that we study. Great volume. Alignments. 
funny of those too. Yeah, whatever recent recall that has to have a lot done after performing the recall. So. What's the recall? It is a rear toe link replacement on the Ford Explorer. Yeah, so that's right. So you get the four wheel alignment then. Yeah. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. Y'all hear that? Remember that. Okay. All right, folks, welcome back to the Stampede. We're here with our favorite auto mechanics teacher, Mr. Tanner. It's got an exciting morning down here. Had the guys from uh, Duncan Ford here with us, and they've donated a vehicle here. Super special. It's a, a great deal here you got going. So kind of tell us, how, how did you get into this with Duncan to start with? Well, uh, be honest with you, I'm not real sure. I can't really remember. Some way or another, uh, uh, Brent was looking to you know get involved in the schools and things, and uh, he came and... Uh, uh, just was you know part of a class and um, uh, Luke who was one of our uh, former students was part of that class and I had some other kids and uh, uh, we just you know Brent was looking to get invested Duncan was obviously looking to get invested in the schools and uh, and I guess we drew the lucky straw and uh, you know here we are you know and we're very thankful for that you know um, and it was just, uh, I guess, just a phone call. You know, they were just, just searching, you know. Right, so. that's great. And you, you mentioned also they've donated some tools to you as well they to have, use for the class. They have. We'll be using uh, the scan tool that they donated, and, and uh, it's a new battery tester. Uh, you know, it's got a print readout and all these kind of different things, and uh, we'll be using it on this car. These kids here will be will be getting uh, acclimated to it as well as myself. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, but they've been they've been great to us. That's awesome. Yeah. So, kind of, what's your plans for the car? I mean, is it, uh... I, we will use this. This mostly will be our computer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, we will use a multimeter. We'll do multimeter readings. Uh, maybe use our power probe and different things like that. You introduce the kids to that. Um, you know, voltage drops, all these kind of different things. You know, on on automotive car, uh, in the automotive industry. So that's that's kind of my plan right now. You know, some of that might change. You know, as we get right. into it, and, you sure. know, and do some other things. But that's that's the current plan. That's great. And you mentioned Luke earlier, who's who's from here last year mm -hmm. and gone to Duncan. What what does that mean to you to see your yeah, kids succeed? He, he, it's kind of like he, he's almost my adopted son, you know, because he he was great. Uh, you know, we have we have other programs. You know, part of our program is our engine team, and he he would come down here. He I hate to say it, he was skipping other classes maybe from time to time to come down here and take <laughs> part of that. But he he was just uh, instrumental in getting that pro that part of the, our program. Uh, uh, off the off the ground, you know, so to speak, and he was just—I uh, could tell probably the first day he stepped in class, he was he was different, you know. And to do this, any of these kids, if they're going to do this and, and do it well, um, it takes a different type of a kid. Sure, you know, it takes a different type of guy to come in here and be committed to it, and he is, and he he's going to be successful. He's going to be extremely successful over there. So. It's great to have that relationship too with Duncan that, you know, the say, as Brent was talking about, you can come out from school and go straight to work there. I mean, that's huge for kids. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, you, you know, these guys are their junior, senior year. You know, eat, not, we have a lot of sophomores sitting in here today, but, you know, they start thinking about what they're going to do because life gets real, real fast for them, you know. Uh, and um, to have the opportunity, uh, especially for what Duncan is doing and, uh, you know, if they can come in, get some base knowledge, you know, uh, you know, the tires, the, the alignments and the electrical and things and, and know how to do a good multi-point inspection and those type of things. Maybe maybe show, demonstrate they can pass an ASE test and those type of things. You know, that, that is all huge for a kid going into the industry. Some of the kids obviously will go into a tech school, uh, but for what Ford and, and the dealerships and things do, you know, these guys can come in. And if they demonstrate that they can, they have a good work ethic, they can comprehend, you know, uh, they're, uh, they're in essence going to flip the bill for for their education. And it's it's a it's a win-win for everybody, sure. you know. So I, I think it's a great thing for these kids to go into a, in particular, a dealership and, and then get their training from there. Absolutely. You know? So are you guys, we, we filmed with you last year with the engine crew and everything. Are you going into the skills competitions again we this will. year? We will. We will be competing in Skills USA. The uh, state competition is in Roanoke, Virginia. So I will try to fill uh, uh, as many slots as we possibly can. Uh, we are going to compete with our engine team. I wish we could have did it with Luke and the guys last year. It just, we kind of run out of time and, and organization and stuff. But we're, I think we're ahead of the game this year. Uh, we will go somewhere and compete. Not sure if it's going to be where exactly. It kind of depends on when the skills competition is. But uh, yeah, we're definitely we're definitely going to do that and uh, look forward to it. We've got some got some good kids here, you know, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. 
Awesome. Well, we look forward to a great year for you. We hope to see you again here soon. Yeah, we'll have Thanks to for back. being with yeah, us again. Thank you for doing this. We'll be right back after a commercial break. Wait a minute, aren't we supposed to have a gigabit download speed? I, I don't understand it. I pay for a thousand megabits. All I get is 400? Well, that's still really fast. Yeah, but I want a super fast gigabit. Well, actually, you are receiving a gigabit connection. What? How? Explain. First of all, having Citizens Gigabit service doesn't necessarily mean all your devices will download at a rate of 1 billion bits of data per second. Most devices in your home aren't even capable of reaching a gigabyte, at least not yet. If you're downloading games and or streaming movies, understand that the content providers often limit speeds to manage their traffic in order to provide services to millions of people. This is called throttling. Citizens will never throttle your speeds. Throttling by the content providers such as Netflix or YouTube is often mistaken by end users as a trouble with their internet providers such as citizens. Second of all, the Gigabit service will ensure all your devices will be operating at their maximum speed possible, but don't expect to be downloading games from Steam at Gigabit speeds. There are many reasons why your speed test isn't exactly showing 1000 megabits. With newer technology, devices are becoming more and more capable of running at download and upload speeds of an entire gigabit. With installing fiber, Citizens is ensuring everyone's devices are operating at the highest speed that those devices and applications will allow. Huh, so I have to buy a whole new computer just to get that gigabit? You could, but there are many things you can do now to increase your internet speed closer to a whole gigabit. To learn how to get the most out of your network, visit citizens.coop. Are you gigabit ready? What are you, what are you doing? Who are you, who are you talking to? Are you talking to me? I don't understand. What do you, what do you... Citizen. Technology for your community. Welcome back to the Stampede, guys. We're here with Brent Brusso from Duncan Ford. Uh, we're very happy to have him here. They've made a, a huge contribution to Floyd Schools. We very much appreciate that. Uh, they are very... Con you know, they are contributing to the future with these kids. And so, Brent, tell us a little bit about this program and, and what Duncan does with it. Okay, so this program was started from Ford a few years ago. Um, they reached out to dealers, uh, you know, wanting dealers to sponsor schools. Uh, honestly, the, the, the first year or so, I was hesitant to, to do it. Um, just from recent history of, of other schools and uh, you know, I had, had one of my technicians say, why don't you go visit Floyd? You know, they've got a new instructor. So I came down here and uh, went through a class and, and knew this was, this was the school to, uh, to sponsor, just with what uh, Sean teaches with safety and what to expect and, and multi-points and, you know, what these kids are going to be doing when they come out of school. I mean, it's, he's setting them up exactly how they, how they should be. So... You know, we filled the paperwork out, you know, the first year, you know, last year was kind of, you know, we're filling out everything. We're trying to figure out what we want to do. And, uh, you know, then we, you know, we're working on the car, getting it donated. And this year we're going to do a, a lot more with some different things with, with the class. And, uh, you know, Sean and I are working on a, you know, trying to figure out like an administration day where uh, the administration can come get a multi-point inspection done on their vehicle from the students, you know, so they can get their vehicle looked out. Maybe an oil change day, you know, and we've got some other uh, other people that we use that are going to sponsor oil and, and filters, so it's going to be no cost, you know, and, and get these these kids some hands-on experience with doing some different stuff. So, you know, that's that's kind of some stuff we're looking at doing, and we'll kind of you know, we'll kind of see see as the year goes on. You know what we're going to do. So that is awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's that's huge for you guys yeah. to do that. Yeah. So so tell us a little bit about the vehicle here that you've donated. It's a 2012 Fiesta. You know, obviously it was a, a you know a vehicle that had some issue that Ford purchased, and they, those are the cars that they're donating these schools to to work on. So, um, you know, it's four cylinder automatic you know so it gives them something to to get their hands on and and something a little newer and uh you know and that's what they're going to be working on when they when they come out of class and get into a dealership so right i mean the buffalo Ed takes it next level too it is it, it is does. yeah it, it is steps it right up yeah. so we wanted to do a little something with uh you know making it making it yours you know so right. 
So these guys that when they're coming out, you guys, and we talked a little bit about it earlier, you guys are very interested in, in having them, you know, straight from school and you kind of have a training program yeah. of your own to pull them right along. Yeah, well, we need them just as much as much as they need us. So, you know, we're committed to uh, onboarding kids out of high school. We're committed to training, coaching, and, and getting them to the next level, sending them to school, which, you know, we cover the cost of that because... You know, we're trying to grow for the future also. So, you know, we want to grow our business. We want to grow you young kids into a career. And that's what it is. It's a career. It's not just a job. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's something that, you know, if you apply yourself that you can, you can make a really good living and it's something to be proud of also, you know, and there's a responsibility with that. I mean, you're, you know, people trust you to work on their vehicles. You know, they're bringing them into you. It's a, it's a trust thing. And, you know, we want to make sure everything's done right so when people are driving their vehicles, they're safe, you know, so. It's worth a lot to have a mechanic you can rely on. I mean, it really is. Yes, yeah, you know, safety's our number one thing at Duncan Ford, so, you know, we want people to, uh, you know, to, to, to come to us and, and we make them feel like family and we want them to, to think we're family also and know when they bring their cars into us that we're gonna take care of them just like they were ours, so. And that's the people that we're looking for when we when we hire people is, yeah, uh, you know, people that are going to do the same. They're going to take care of people's cars. So that is great. That's the main focus. Well, that's awesome. And thank you very much for being here with sure, us today, sure. and and thank you for your for your donation to yep. Floyd County. That's awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be doing more for sure. Great, yep. great. We'll be right back after a short break. How many gigs would a gig user use if a gig user used Citizen City Zip Fiber? How many gigs would a gig user use if a gig user used Citizen City Zip Fiber? <laughs> How many gigs would a gig user use if a gig user used City Zip Citizen City Zip Fiber? How many gigs would a gig user use if a gig user used City Zip City Zip? How many gigs would a gig user use if a gig user used Citizen City Zip Fiber? All right, folks, we're back here with uh, Luke Whitlock, still down at Auto Mechanics this morning. Uh, Luke was, if you remember him from last season, uh, he was here, he's the stud of the auto mechanics down here. We spent some time with him. You were tracking down some electrical problems. It was mm -hmm. awesome. So now you, you've come on, you're out of school. You're right. with Duncan now, so yep. how's that been? It's been good, it's been good. Uh, like I said, uh, we made a smooth transition between school and work. You know, Sean Tanner really helped out with that. And, uh, you know, he prepared us for what we needed. And uh, yeah, it's going good. So what what are you doing with Duncan? I'm doing uh, basic maintenance right now, moving on to you know getting the bigger stuff as you learn and you know, progress in the the workforce. It's awesome. So did you did you go right after school was done last year, or did you have a little yep. break in between? Yep. So you went right to it. Huh? Yeah, right into it. It's mm -hmm. awesome. So did you go through the the training programs there with them as well? How was that? Yes, yes. Set up with training, and uh, it's, most of it's online. You know. Like uh, Brent said, you can get into some of the more physical work and uh, you know learn actually on the car. So that's great. Yeah. So, would you recommend this route to other folks here and the other guys that's oh, been yeah. taking this class? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's good, good stop good for Duncan. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Yeah. Do you have any advice for the young folks that maybe are considering heading down your path as well? Yeah, definitely. Before you get out of school, prepare yourself as much as possible. You know, train, learn as much as possible about a car. You know, as as you can. You know, just get your knowledge down. That's yeah. great. So probably feels better now to, to go in here and work on these cars for a paycheck instead of here in the classroom, right? Yeah, a little bit better. Feels pretty good, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, congrats to you, Luke, man. I'm very Thank happy you. for you. Appreciate I hope it, it continues a good relationship there. So. Yeah.